This is the story of Atlantis. Remember Atlantis, that animated movie that nobody watched? The one with Michael J. Fox? Not ringing a bell? Well, once upon a time, there was a curious professor named Milo J. Thatch Fox. Milo was obsessed with the idea of a lost underwater city called Atlantis. He was shunned by his peers, so he set out to prove them wrong and find the lost underwater city of Atlantis. So Michael Thatch assembled a crack team consisting of a big dude that does bombs, a nerdy geology guy, a radio lady, a mechanic, and a cook, all led by a sketchy dude named Mickey Rourke. They get into a submarine and go into the ocean, but are attacked by a giant robot fish monster. They escape, but not before one of them is eaten by the giant robot fish monster. After a while, they finally find the lost city of Atlantis. Milo Foch and the gang are greeted by Kida, the princess of Atlantis, and her lackeys. Kida is somehow hundreds of years old, but looks like a hot 20-something. Hella guilty. She speaks some crazy language like Nakatukutukutu, and then the rest of the movie speaks English. Because magic. Somehow, Fox Mulder J. Thatch convinces them all that they come in peace, and Kida invites them back to the city. When they arrive, everyone is standing around looking at the Atlantis flag with their hands over their hearts. What's going on? asked Milo. It's our national anthem, said Kida, sung by Atlantis Morissette. Just then, everybody started singing. I've got one hand in my pocket and the other... That's all we can legally afford. Back at the palace, Milo J. Foxy Thatch shows Kida his journal, which is filled with information about Atlantis. They swim under the city to read murals and ancient writings, and discover that the source of power in Atlantis is a giant crystal, which provides Atlanteans with power and longevity through the crystals worn around their neck. So you win, hippies. In this stupid reality, all those dumb crystals you all believe in actually work. My local reads through his journal, surprised that this information isn't in it, but then he finds that one of his pages was torn out. When he gets back to the surface, he finds that Mickey Rourke has it, and intended to take the crystal back to the surface to sell it. Mickey Rourke uses the moves he learned from making the movie The Wrestler to kill Kida's dad, the king of Hotlantis. Rourke and his cronies tie up Kida, Slave Leia style, and start packing to leave Atlantis. Milo tries to convince the team to abandon Rourke and stay with him in Atlantis, but they're all like, it's all about the Benjamins, baby, and they pile into the submarine and start to leave Atlantis. As they're leaving, everything starts going dark, and water starts flooding the city. The Atlanteans start freaking out, but then some of them start singing the national anthem, as sung by Atlantis Morissette. I got one hand on my pocket, and the other... Then the whole city starts to flood, and Michael J. Fox and Rose, er, Kida, float up on a door that they both could have fit on, because both of them could have fit on that door. But then, because the crystal isn't in Atlantis anymore, Kida isn't able to stay so young, and so she ages rapidly and dissolves like the end of the Last Crusade. Come back next time, and you'll hear the story of the man who ate 100 waffles and lived to tell the tale for a second. This is Sparta, said the unicorn, as she bucked and kicked the security guard into a giant vat of industrial solvent, where he immediately was liquefied. That's why, to this day, Red Bull still has a slightly khaki flavor. Mmm, you can really taste the khaki.